My phone will ring. And my wife was like, who is that? You're not married anymore. Who is that? I was sort of scared myself. I didn't know. <laughs> but it's Antonio. And, and, and you know, he's like, hey, my brother. And I, I, I thought it was a crank call at first. I said, who's this? <laughs> oh, you don't know me now, brother? I said, oh, Antonio, because his number's blocked. And he called me so much at 3 and 4 in the morning that my wife now just, whenever he calls, she's just like, tell Antonio I said hello, you know, so, so that works. Dogged, he's been a great leader for this organization. He fought for us, and one thing he said, and then I'll take my seat, one thing he said when he was uh, inaugurated last year, he said, they're gonna respect us for what we do, and I'm gonna make sure. You see him on Meet the Press, CNN, all over talking about mayors, and I can tell you that Vice President Biden gave one of the best speeches I, I ever heard him give, and he gave it all of you mayors. You know why he could talk about that? Because he lives it each and every day, and he knows each and every one of us and our issues. We keep fighting, keep pushing for our cities, and no one has worked harder over the last two years during his presidency and after, after that than uh, Antonio. So Antonio, I'm just humbly saying thank you, my brother, and God bless you, and we're so very appreciative that you spent some of your busy time leading this great organization. Thank you so much, Mayor Palmer. I'm delighted to announce that the Latino Leaders Network has renamed the award in honor of Mayor Antonio Villarigosa to be presented annually at the Tribute to Mayors to recognize outstanding mayors who are bringing their communities together. I think all of you will agree that mayors have many, many important responsibilities, to be sure. And yet what I believe is perhaps the most important responsibility that all of you have as mayor of your community is bringing your community together. The Antonio Villarigosa Leadership Award is presented to a mayor who has met the very, very high standard for bringing their community together. And who better to represent and pre really the, the leadership that's required to bring a community together than the mayor of Los Angeles, California, and the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Antonio Villarigosa. I'd like the mayor to come up and Before I come up, I think we got somebody who needs to say something nice about me, and I, I like people saying nice things about me. So I'm going to bring Kevin Johnson up for a moment uh, before I accept this award. Thank you. We thought, uh, we're delighted that Mayor Johnson has arrived, and we'll now uh, give him the opportunity. Mayor Johnson, of course, the mayor of Sacramento, but also the newly re-elected mayor of Sacramento. Yeah, all right. All right, how's everybody doing? Great. Um, I want to thank Mickey and the Latino Leader Network and uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors just for the great work they do uh, on behalf of all mayors. So let's give Mickey and the uh, Latino Network a round of applause. So, Mayor Viragosa, uh, just want to say thank you. You know, I think all of us mayors have looked up to you as a role model. And uh, you had an impact in a lot of our lives. And when I think about the true spirit of a public servant and why we all set out to do this job, you certainly represent it and embody it probably more than all. And then on a personal note, since I'm the mayor of Sacramento, which is the little city outside of LA, <laughs> that you used to reside in, you used to spend two thirds of your week in Sacramento, I'll have you know, uh, when you were the speaker in a big wig, and um, you know he knows state politics. He hobnobs with presidents. We just hung out with the vice president. He speaks that language, but more importantly, he hasn't forgotten where he's from. 
And that, to me, is what's most remarkable. The fact that he is from Los Angeles and the Barrios, and he still holds everybody real close to heart. So this is a story I wanted to just share that puts Antonio in perspective. You know, education is a top priority for all of us as mayors. You can't have a great city without great schools. And, you know, he has taken this issue head on as a mayor. It's not popular, but it takes courage to really lead out in the front. And he's done that. And he's a Democrat, and he used to be a union organizer. And a lot of times, the issues that we have to take stands on um, that are in behalf of children, the adults aren't always pleased with the stance we take. But he never backs down. And I remember about a year ago, I was uh, in, in Hawaii trying to get away for a, a quick vacation. And my phone is just blowing up. And it's a private number. And you know, we don't answer phones from private numbers because we have private numbers, so it's probably somebody like us. <laughs> and I finally answered as Antonio. And he's sniffling. I'm thinking, like, what's wrong, man? You got allergies? You okay? He said, man, have you seen that movie, Waiting for Superman? <laughs> Raise your hand if you saw this movie, Waiting for Superman. So he calls me and he says, did you see how painful it was that these kids who wanted to go to these good schools, these charter schools, they couldn't get in. And he's like bawling on the phone. I'm like, the cool mayor from LA is bawling? And he's like, no, nah, man, we got to take this issue on. And there was one scene when a little Latino girl, wait, let, let me finish. This is my, you get to talk after me. <laughs> Come on now, let me finish my story. I know what happened. So there's this one scene when this Latino girl is sitting with her father and her name doesn't get called. And I'm thinking, that's why he's boohooing. Not until a couple months later, we're in Washington, D.C. talking about the story. And I'm thinking, it's a Latino girl. He said, nah, that little African-American kid named Anthony. And that's when I realized that my responsibility as a mayor is to have a great role model, number one, but two, as we fight for kids, that's important. But three, blacks and Latinos, we've got to come together on these issues. And you embody it more than all of us. So. so on behalf of a humble mayor in Sacramento and not a Laker fan, <laughs> And don't you guys try to get my Sacramento Kings. You already have two teams down there. Let's give a round of applause. Bring them up again. Antonio Varagosa. First of all, let me thank uh, Mickey Ibarra. When I think about someone who uh, so selflessly, and I, I use the word selflessly uh, and emphasize it, promotes others, uh, particularly people from his community, uh, other leaders. Uh, I don't know one, anyone who does it better than Mickey Ibarra. Uh, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it so he can get his name uh, on, you know, uh, an award. Uh, he doesn't do it because uh, he needs something from that particular leader. He does it because he's passionate uh, about his community. And he really wants uh, our leaders to work together and uh, to be unified in fighting for our community. And I, I'll tell you something. I, I, I couldn't be prouder to call Mickey Ibarra a friend. Uh, I think it's why uh, so many of the mayors uh, have worked with him. They remember him when he was in the White House. Uh, they remember how responsive he was. Uh, they remember uh, that he always took their call and uh, that he did what he said he would do. 
that he always came through. And uh, Mickey, uh, I want to thank you wherever you are right now. You sit on my seat, Mickey. That's my seat. Uh, let's give him a big hand, Mickey Barra. Of course, he's stole my young star staffer and his partner and friend and uh, Norma Vega, who's here with us today. And, and now it's, he knows talent when he sees it, as I do. And, you know, let me say a couple things about uh, the people that said nice things about him. I feel really bad that I didn't get to hear Manny, but, you know, <laughs> Manny and I have uh, a mutual admiration society. Uh, when I asked uh, that Manny um, and Palmer uh, speak. I did because I'm being recognized for my role as mayor and obviously president of the Conference of Mayors. And I think, I can think of, t there are no two other people that played a more prominent role in uh, convincing me that I should run uh, for president. Uh, these two people uh, are the reason why uh, I was uh, elected president. Uh, Palmer calling me uh, all the time, uh, telling me to run for advisory committee and trustee and promoting me and uh, always so thankful and appreciative that uh, the mayor of LA was as involved as I've been in this organization. Uh, and so I want to thank you uh, for your friendship. Uh, for promoting uh, me throughout the years, uh, for your uh, tutorials. Uh, he, he doesn't talk about the times he calls me and tells me what I ought to do even now that he's no longer mayor. And I return his call you do. as quickly as I do before you were mayor. And I'm going to say to all of you, that's what we ought to do for one another. I re in fact, I like returning my friends' calls who aren't in office anymore faster than I did when they were in those positions. Because I think that's what friendship and respect is all about. So Doug Palmer, thank you. And then I didn't get to hear Manny, but I'll tell you something. You know, uh, we, we all draft. Any of you ever cycle? I used to before I shattered this elbow. But you know, you draft. Uh, and you draft behind the lead. And, you know, Manny early on uh, was a supporter, uh, was a, a mentor, uh, was uh, worked with Doug to kind of engineer my rise to this organization. And I, I appreciate uh, him for that. And uh, he can tell you, I call him back as quickly as I did, uh, if not quicker than before. And, uh, he was uh, one of the great uh, presidents, as was Doug, of this organization. And uh, I wanted the two of you to be a part of this uh, because of all that you've done to help me get here. So uh, to Manny Diaz, the great mayor of Miami, thank you as well. And, and, and because I've worked so well with Doug, and I, I guess he's still uh, coming back from, we were with the vice president, we weren't fashionably late, and I apologize to all of you who maybe got here earlier. Uh, we couldn't leave. Uh, and then we got sequestered because the way it works, you know, when those, uh, when those, uh, what are they called, caravan or whatever, you have to wait until they're gone. <laughs> so we got stuck. Uh, so I do apologize. But uh, I asked uh, that Doug also participate because I'll, I can't guarantee it, but I'm not sure that two uh, president, vice president, uh, have worked as closely as we have. Uh, I was a big promoter for his early on, uh, just as you two were for me. Uh, I knew it was important to have a partner. So he, can't, he couldn't come, but um, not here yet. And, uh, but I wanted to acknowledge and thank him as well. And then let me say a couple things. You know, I like to say I'm riding into the sunset, and <laughs> nobody seems to buy that. No. Uh, no. But, you know, I, I am looking forward uh, to a, a little time 
uh, to reflect uh, when this is all over. I, I admire those mayors who have been mayor, you know, for six terms and five terms and four terms and, you know, three terms. Uh, I, um, I can tell you I've enjoyed these seven years. And uh, I can also tell you I'm going to work all the way to the last day, 11.59 and 59 seconds uh, on June 30th. Uh, because I've been Speaker of the California State Assembly, uh, and after the Speaker of the Congress, it's the big speakership, and a powerful one. Uh, I've been Majority Leader, Majority Whip. Uh, I've been a Council Member. I had a, a phenomenal run, if you will, when you think I, I was 3% in the polls when I decided a, a year and a half out to run for mayor. Uh, the other guy was at 45, 3% knew me. I'm sorry, 3% would vote for me, 45% would vote for him, 9% knew me, 72% knew him. A year later, I won. I lost in the runoff. Um, and I came back and beat uh, a sitting popular council member who, who had a 69% favorability rating, and then uh, the incumbent mayor who had beat me four years before. And I tell people, with all the things I've ever done in my life, there is nothing I've ever done or will ever do that I will enjoy being uh, more the mayor. I love being the mayor of my town. And I'm particularly grateful because my grandpa came with a shirt on his back, you know, more than 100 years ago, worked in the fields, uh, didn't speak any English, didn't have much of an education, uh, was a hard worker, uh, a dreamer, you know, built a small business into a thriving middle-class produce business, uh, had a good life. My mother was in the, the best um, Catholic boarding school in L.A. And then he lost all his money in the Depression. And his wife left him. And he had to put my mom in a foster home. And I tell people I was the son, the grandson of the greatest generation. My, my grandpa, well, Grandpa Pete, sacrificed during World War II and uh, gave me the opportunity that I have here as mayor. So uh, to uh, be able uh, to have uh, been the president of the Conference of Mayors. And early on, I told Doug, you know, I know I'm mayor of LA and I can call anybody. Uh, I can meet with anybody. But I want to be a part of this organization because I know that I can learn uh, from the other mayors. And I said this the other day. Now, every time I go to one of your towns, uh, I walk out saying, God, I want to do that. I like that. You know, that's the way we ought to do X or Y. I've learned so much from those of you who I uh, work with me in California. I've learned so much from uh, those of you who I've got to meet and work with across the country. And uh, I'm learning every single day. And that's the beauty of being mayor. So uh, I, I, I appreciate that you would, uh, you know, in the, started out in 1994, did the biggest school bond in U.S. history, the biggest parks bond in U.S. history, largest expansion of medical care in, in California since the uh, Medi-Cal, uh, when I did the Healthy Families Program, and I never let anybody name anything for me. But uh, when, uh, 